and welcome to Click Spotlight. My name is John Sands and I've got a couple of interests uh, in my life and, um, and one of those being the Internet of Things and one of those being retro gaming because I remember in my childhood um, playing Asteroids and Defender and Galaxians and stuff like that. Now I found out uh, through the grapevine um, that actually someone who I know very well has done a video um, combining both of those things that um, that I have an interest in, and that's their very own Mike Torello. Now he has created a video on YouTube. It's had nearly well over 1,300 views on there, so it's on the Click channel. So you can always go along and have a look at that. So welcome, Mike, and thanks for getting involved in Spotlight. Thank you, John. Pleasure to be here. Ah, pleasure having you on. So most people at Click will know you, but for those of you who don't know you, know you, then then tell a little bit about yourself and, and what you do. Absolutely. So. As John had mentioned, my name is Mike Tarallo. Uh, I've been with ClickSense. I've been with ClickSense. I'm so used to saying ClickSense. <laughs> yes. I've, been, <laughs> I've been with Click uh, a little over six years now after the Expressor acquisition in 2012. Um, from a whole career perspective, it's about 20 plus years within BI mm -hmm. and data integration space, spanning proprietary and open source uh, BI, data visualization, and ETL companies. Uh, pretty much in the realm of customer support, technical support, and then pre-sales. And then when I joined Expressor, they needed somebody to uh, work pre-sales and marketing. So I did that for a little while. And then when Click was um, picking up Expressor at that point, they needed somebody in marketing. So I went over to the product marketing team. And uh, it was there where I started to find a new love for uh, producing video content for the Expressor videos. Yeah, and that's where um, uh, people are going to well, certainly have heard you and seen you will be on those Expresso videos. On a side note, the Expresso <laughs> and now with um, uh, with Podium Data, there's a little bit of um, synchronization between those two, isn't there? There is, uh, but talking with you know some of the higher ups, I was kind of like making sure that what this acquisition for Podium wasn't going to be like an Expresso 2.0. Uh, yeah, so yeah, to agree, speak, yeah. and it really isn't. It is more uh, focused on at scale uh, data preparation capability um, and with our strategies for multi-cloud and the big data index, um, this is going to fit in perfectly with that. Mm. Uh, I'm fairly new to a lot of the Podium data information. Uh, I was given it only about a week ago when I started to produce yeah. a video for that, uh, but I see this is going to be slightly different than the way Expressor handled um, data preparation. Yeah, I, I think you're... Um... I think you're right, and uh, and that's the question I was going to ask you. If you mm -hmm. must be involved in um, getting, I know you did the, uh, and there is one out there for everyone watching. There is a um, a podium data uh, video that you've done already, isn't it? About a couple of minutes, um, sort of helped to correct uh, just an overview. Demystify. Fantastic. Anyway, let's get back to the the, the main subject. So as mm -hmm. I said before in the intro, um, the Internet of Things, which is a fascinating subject, and then retro gaming. I mean, mm -hmm. what? How did how did you link those two together, and why did you link those two together? I guess I am describe myself as like a jack of all trades, right? You know, master of a few or master of many. And I like to dabble in everything, right? As you guys know, I do the video content, but it's not yep. somebody says, here's a script, record it, and then somebody else puts all the clicks to it, for example. I actually do all of the hands-on stuff as well. So I yeah. internalize a lot of that. And it makes for a video that's probably better production because it's the person actually using it and doing it yes. and knows how to present yep. it. So... What happened was is we're at Connections, and uh, I was already privy to this uh, IoT race game that was done over in Europe, but they set it up at Connections, and uh, Daniel Lunkman, I think that's how it's pronounced, mm -hmm. introduced me to what they were doing, um, and he explained at a high level of how it works. Now, I have enough interest to be dangerous with technology and electronics, and he introduced me to the Wemos microprocessor, and we talked yeah. a little bit, and immediately... The retro gaming thing has always been a passion of mine. It's something that um, I've always loved video games and then collections and stuff. And we can talk about that later. Uh, yeah. But immediately when Daniel mentioned how the cars are initiating a sensor and picking up a signal voltage, and then the microprocessor mm. is registering that, basically at that point, the microprocessor registers that data. It could be streamed um, to a file or written to a file, an SD card, etc. Regardless, it's collecting data. So. Yeah. In order for me to take interest in, in something and really learn about it, it's got to be something that's of interest to me. And, mm. you know, I'm not interested in sales data. And, you know, we always create these demonstrations with, oh, you know, profit, sales, cost, etc. So I said, how can I learn about this and make it interesting where I want to continue to learn about this? Mm. And I said, well, 
I have a little side hobby where I create custom controllers for the retro games. So instead of using the original joysticks, you know, you can use a control pad. Yeah. So I said, let me take the feedback or the, uh, the, the input that's coming from the controller and feed it into a microprocessor. And let me see if I could capture those movements. Because all it's really doing at that time, it's registering a connection or no connection, you know, one or a zero, voltage or no voltage. So up, down, left, right, push buttons, etc. And that's what gave me an interest that maybe I can capture those movements and then, of course, put a click sense spin on it because yep. at that point it's data and then create a dashboard where how many times did this game require pushing up or pushing down or left and right or fire A or fire B, et cetera. And then mingle that with other gaming data like gaming scores, gaming players, gaming time, how long the person played. I, I, like, the, um, I like the way that you could actually work out which button would, would, would mm -hmm. um, wear out the quicker. That was, that was fascinating. Oh, well, that's obviously there's yeah. got to be like what kind of business value behind it, right? Yeah, you want to yeah, do yeah. predict life cycle uh, this controller is only going to last you you know so many hours let's say of gameplay and you so 3D you know printed those didn't you you got those 3d printed the controller. no so that's a great little story so Joe Warmington uh, does mm. a lot of 3d printing stuff and when we were talking about it uh, we found the schematic to 3d print a case for it just to see if it could yeah. be done yeah uh, currently I just get my cases off of eBay but Joe printed oh, me okay. out one at connections and um, didn't exactly fit the the PCB, the uh, printed circuit board, right? But this is something I'll explore a later date. But yeah, Joe yeah, yeah, printed yeah. me up a, a nice little, uh, uh, with like a paperweight I use on my desk now. <laughs> and, and, I, and I love the, um, the, the, the blending of old and new. So you've got the, the yeah. old of, you know, asteroids and, um, and so on, the space invaders, and the new, yeah. which is the Internet of Things and the 3D printing, etc. That blend makes it, yeah, it does make it fascinating. Exactly, exactly. And, it, you know, if anything, it sparks an interest. It's an art form. You know, we want people to continue to be engaged with it who have share similar interests. Even for those who don't share an interest in retro gaming, but might share an mm. interest in learning about Internet of Things and yeah, the microprocessors, yeah. um, you know, it'll spark them to do something else. And that's how I, mm. you know, other people create like irrigation center, sensors where, you know, the water yep. gets low, the moisture is low, and there's a sensor that is hooked up, and then it'll automatically trigger a sprinkler, let's say. I did something with the, the retro gaming in the aspect, but it could be applied to any yeah. instance of uh, where signals or sensors are capturing data. Yeah, and, and the Internet of Things it is actually a very huge subject, isn't it? I mean, down mm -hmm. to, I mean, one of the facts I learned, and if you ever watch me present, you, you've heard this many, many times, was the gathering of data and using that to to help people cross the road. So you'd have a sensor on the person themselves if they're over 65, I think it's an RF chip or something. Mm -hmm. And that would that would give you longer to cross the road. And But that, again, you're gathering more and more data. And, and it's a fascinating subject. And, and we are not going to have enough time. And maybe that's a subject for a, another interview, uh, Mike, as we can, um, we can dig down a bit deeper into the Internet Absolutely. of Things. So we, we've got given everyone quite a good um, understanding of, of what it is. And the video that you've um, you've done also, I think, is a very good short introduction to what the Internet of Things was. Yep. But let's go and have a look at this actually happening. Inspired by our big data IoT race game at Connections, I wanted to learn more how it worked, what was going on under the covers, how was the data being collected and processed, etc. I did my research and started to learn more about these little things. In summary, I discovered that these devices are based on an open source electronics platform that uses hardware and software known as Arduino. Overall, I learned enough to try something that I originally thought about at Connections and of course that was retro gaming related. As I played a game on my Atari 2600, wouldn't it be cool if I could capture my game movements from my control pad? I could then feed that data into ClickSense and produce some analysis on the movements. I could even augment the data with game titles and player info and scoring to create game and player stats. The data could even tell me which game would wear out my controller the most. Collect enough and you could even predict the lifespan of your controller. Obviously these may not be pragmatic, but it was definitely a fun way to learn about IoT while applying it to something I love, retro gaming and of course Click. So the thinking of just putting that video together is I wanted to pres uh, I wanted to basically describe a brief history, uh, you know, what Internet of Things is, how it's applied in today's real world, pretty much explaining anything could be 
um, you know, apply to the Internet mm. of Things, and then put my passion of retro gaming into it. And um, basically, the little montage at the end is, is really more of just the collection of the repeated process, and then obviously feeding that data into ClickSense. Um, mm. That could always be expanded upon. For my example, you know, I work very fast. I have to get something done and then as soon as I do it, I'm done with it and I move on yes, to the next yes. project. Ideally, like, you know, behind my desk, which you don't see, um, I have tons of parts, Arduino, Wemos, you know, it's all these, you know, sensors. Mm. The next step would be, for example, to stream it directly to uh, an HTTP uh, yeah. server or an FTP server or even stream it directly into Click Core, for example. And there's people doing that already. So by means, I'm not an expert on all of that, but I know it can be done because our experts have already done stuff like that. Yeah. And I, and I think uh, hopefully and what will be really good and is that people get inspired by this and go off and do their own projects. Exactly. And if you do, if any, and if anyone does, by the way, do please get in touch and let me know so we can we can maybe feature that. So if it does, it does mm -hmm. plant that seed, then then that will be amazing. OK, so we're going to mm -hmm. we're going to slightly shift now, Mike, okay. and we're going to try and find a little bit more about, you know, what it, who is Mike Torello. So okay. you're obviously a very busy man and got lots on your plate. But mm -hmm. when you can relax, how do you mm -hmm. relax? So <laughs> I don't think if those who know me and John, you know me really well and you yeah, talk yeah. to me, <laughs> you know, I'm animated. I'm high, uh, you know, I don't want to call myself high strung, but type A Italian personality. <laughs> I don't think yeah. the word relax is in my vocabulary. <laughs> you know, I don't really drink and I don't smoke cigars and um, yeah. You know, I don't watch sports that much, but I guess you could say the way I relax. I mean, one thing I wanted to mention earlier, you know, I'm a, I'm a family guy. You know, mm. I, I love interacting and being with my family. I, our family, three children and my wife, we're very close. We do almost everything together. So part of away from the Internet of Things and retro gaming is spending time with family. Uh, but that's yeah. not always relaxing because there's the stresses no. of <laughs> the daily yeah. life, right? You know, so I try to balance yeah. workload, health, and family. You know, if one of those things come out of whack, then it affects the others, right? Yeah, um, of course, of course. I would say if I do relax, it's just the interest in tinkering. Um, I do a lot of DIY handyman stuff around yeah. the house. I, my whole house is home automation with the, uh, you know, Alexa and, um, uh, what you would call it, uh, Z-Wave technologies, yeah. you know, I can control everything with voice automation. Mm -hmm. So if I have free time, it's like, what can I do next? You know, what can I integrate? Yeah, yeah. Uh, and then the rest of the stuff is really tinkering with all my electronics and my toys, you know, but it's mm -hmm. not relaxing in the sense that you're just like sitting there and your no. mind is clear. My mind is always thinking. Um, mm -hmm. If I have time, you know, it's like after everybody's asleep because I don't yeah, want yeah. to feel that so sort of like guilty feeling like oh the kids are up i should be spending time with my son or my daughters or my wife it's like okay yeah, yeah. it's 11 o'clock they're sleeping i'm gonna go to my workbench so to speak and i think of it as like a little software industry you know i have my r d time where i'm trying to think yeah. of what new controller could i and, build and isn't right? it good mike isn't it good that actually and this is something i find myself mm -hmm. being a little bit guilty about is enjoying work and that makes it that <laughs> makes it relaxing if you're enjoying what you're doing exactly. not all the time of course i'm not abnormal but doing stuff sometimes that really catches your eye. So if you had a exactly. food that you that you least like, what would that be and why? <laughs> um, you know, it's hard to think. It's, you know, people normally say, what, liver and onions. But that that's not even yeah. something I even try. Brussels is another one. Well, I haven't even tried those. So in other words, I don't no. I don't want them. So they're not even on the scale <laughs> of least to yeah. most, right? Um, if there's anything that's least, uh, I like lemon and I like chicken. But I don't like yeah. lemon chicken. My mom made that for me as a kid. It's disgusting. It's just not a, a combination. It's like when somebody mixes, you know, mayonnaise and raisins and carrots. I like all three oh. of those separately. But when you mix yeah, them together, yeah. it's so nasty. So I'm, <laughs> I'm totally with you on that one. Sweet stuff with savory stuff is, is yeah. off my radar. Unless it's barbecue, you know, maybe I like. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Maybe, maybe a bit then. So um, I am your um, fairy godmother now. Um, yeah. You can okay. imagine me um, as your fairy godmother, and I can give you a superpower. One superpower. What would that be? Um, it's a toss up between like immortality or invincibility. Ooh. Um, or trans, you know, uh, what do you call that? Uh, not transportation. What, no, no, no. Um, oh, no, no, no. Teleportation. I just said, teleportation. Thank you. Yeah. You know, being able to, you know, teleport myself from one area to the other. I'm not a big flyer. You know, I have mm. a lot of anxiety. I, I don't like to fly, but I know I'm also missing out on a lot of things in the world yeah, because yeah. I don't really opt to jump on a plane if I can't. 
Uh, so I think maybe teleportation might be uh, okay. uh, one of the things. And I can teleport maybe to different places in the, the galaxy as long as I could, you know, exist But wouldn't that there. also be amazing? So no security, no customs, no nothing. Just <laughs> I just go. Take me there. Fingers. Exactly. Oh, that would be fantastic. I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm with you on that one. So, okay. <laughs> Last question. What's okay. next on your radar then? What have you got or what is there a particular milestone okay. you're hoping to reach this year? So, I mean, I got my notes written here, but uh, <laughs> yeah, actually the podium data I've been involved in. So uh, mm. there's some work that's going to be put that way. And this time of year is the Gartner RFP. So Ooh. I'm mm. going to be heavily involved in the video creation for that. Hopefully a lot of the work that we've done in prior years is still reusable. Um, but, you know, uh, you know, obviously our September release is coming. Um, yeah. The Gartner R RFP and the podium stuff are probably going to take up a lot of my time. Uh, on a yeah. personal note, my daughter is starting college, so that's going to take yeah. some, some time out of so her. So you have no money then? Too. No, exactly. Well, student loans. But uh, hopefully, ah. <laughs> <laughs> hopefully she, you know, she, she got scholarships too, so uh, hopefully oh, uh, that'll help here and there. Well, well, Mike, it's been an absolute pleasure, as always, and we've had thank many you. a chat before, and um, yeah, we met at Connections, etc. So thank oh, you so absolutely. much. Um, enjoy uh, the rest of your year. I'm sure we'll, we'll catch up at some point, and thank you for getting involved in Spotlight. It's been My fun. pleasure. Thanks for including me, and uh, you know, if you guys ever need to get in touch with me with anything, feel free to reach out. I'm a people pleaser. I hate to say no. <laughs> certainly will do. Thank you very much. Take care. See you later. Adieu.